Hello, welcome to this trig substitution concept video. And it's going to be regarding the third type. We've seen um, the concept video regarding the first type, which is a squared minus x squared under the radical and letting x equal a sine theta. We've seen a concept video on the second type where you have a plus in between them. And now we're going to look at the third type where it's x squared minus a squared. We're going to see why we choose a, the certain trig sub that works with this. And we're going to see how, how it works, the intricacies of it. And then in the next video, we'll have an example of us using this particular trig sub. Um, in all of these, we're assuming that a is greater than zero. And so we um, choose in this third type to let x equal a secant theta. Then we're going to find out why. but um, as with the others, remember to always uh, immediately find out what dx is, and secant derivative is secant tangent. So a secant theta tan theta d theta is your replacement to dx. But the reason why we choose this trig sub is because the radical is going to be replaced by a trig function. To figure out, we'll, we'll do it this one time, and then we'll just memorize um, what to do um, subsequently. And, and 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 when we go to use this. Uh, substitution we don't have to go through these algebraic steps but I want you to see it once to, to understand why this works so well and it all comes in by you replacing x with a sec theta squaring the a and squaring the secant factoring out the a squared they have in common and here is why this particular trig sub works in the end we'd like for this to be a perfect square What's in the parentheses, secant squared minus 1 is exactly equal to tangent squared. And so what we have underneath the square root is a perfect square. Now, technically, when we take the square root of a perfect square, we, we acquire sort of absolute value bars that we have to worry about. Um, th could this thing possibly be negative? And so um, tan theta can take on values that are both positive and negative. Uh, A is positive, though. And so to figure out what's, what angles we are considering that would then dictate to you how tangent works, we have to go back and remember uh, what secant looks like because the arc secant is going to be something that's going to be kind of difficult to, to look at. We, can, we, can, we work with arc sine and we work with arc tan, but arc secant isn't something that we work with. And so let's just take a second to remember what secant looks like. The graph of secant, remember secant is the reciprocal of cosine and so as cosine just lives between minus one and one when cosine goes to zero secant goes off to infinity or minus infinity so the graph of secant is these uh these parabolas that happen in bands and in order for a function to be invertible it has to pass the horizontal line test and it's not going to pass that in the natural band of minus pi over two to pi over two and so uh, what mathematicians have chosen as the, the band that makes this function invertible, we go from 0 to pi. Of course, we have an issue at pi over 2, though. So we break it up and we say, well, 0 to pi over 2, quadrant number 1, pi over 2 to pi, quadrant number 2. And we just can't allow for, for the angle to be pi over 2. And so these two strips here then make up a domain that's now uh, invertible, restricted domain, and now this function is invertible. And when you invert a function, you reflect it over the line y equals x. And something strange happens with this. The arc secant function takes on the following graph. Let me go back here. I'm not sure if it's large enough. Let me go and just add another slide so you can see it large. Ugh. Sorry. Here we go. So this is what the arc secant graph is going to look like. When you reflect that about the x, uh, about the y equals x line, it breaks into these two branches. It's positive. The y, the the output, the angle values are positive, but we can't allow uh, pi over two. It's in the band from zero to pi over two. That was the uh, blue band, and from pi over two to pi, that's the red band, and it splits like this. I mean, just think about the, uh, so so we're trying to figure out what's going on with the theta values and what's going on with the x values. I've chosen to, um, to, to throw in an a into this graph. This is a equals 2. 
But um, I guess the main point behind showing you this is that we really want to know what's going on with the angles. Now we know what angles to choose. And now remember now tangent is what we have that's inside of these absolute value bars. And so uh, for the first quadrant from zero to pi over two, the blue band, um, yeah, tangent's positive. But for that second quadrant from pi over two to pi, tangent is negative. And so this has an extra layer of complication that the other trig substitutions didn't have. Now that we know that, we can go back to the um, current part of this slide we were in. Sorry, one second here. These are all just technicalities that you actually don't have to worry too much about, but I just want you to understand the concept. And so um, we were able to drop the absolute value bars with the other two trig substitutions. But with this trig substitution, we can't drop it. Tan takes on negative values. Um, we have to break it into these two branches, 0 to pi over 2 and pi over 2 to pi. Theta is the arc secant of x over 2. So we know about the thetas. Uh, let's talk about the x. What kind, of, what kind of x values can you have? Imagine if a was equal to 2. What kind of x values can you have? Is, is it possible to have uh, x being equal to negative 3? And so we have um, negative 3 who gets squared, and that's 9. So 9 minus 4, that's a positive value. That, yeah, that's fine. But is it possible to have x equal to 1? Here we have an issue, though, because 1 squared is 1, minus 4 is a negative 3. You can't have a negative underneath the square root. So what happens is x can't take on values between minus a and a. That would cause the square root to be negative. And so that's why we had the sort of branching in the graph there. X can be bigger than 2, and x can be smaller than negative 2. Basically, x can, uh, x can be from, uh, from a on larger or from negative a on larger. So x, if x is negative, then as a technicality, that, that then would mean that you're using those angles from the second quadrant, which would mean that tangent is actually negative, but um, it'll, it'll rarely happen. But I just want you to know about that technicality there. And so the radical gets replaced with the standard a tan theta, so long as x is bigger than a. But then when x is smaller than negative a, it actually you have to put a negative on it, and x, the radical becomes negative a tan theta. Don't worry too much about it. I just needed to tell you that. And then also, um, the reference triangle comes from the trig sub. Solve for the trig function. Uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That makes secant hypotenuse over adjacent. So you draw in a right triangle and you put theta as the base angle. You make the hypotenuse x and then the adjacent side a. The third side that's missing there is this original radical x squared minus a squared under the radical. You can do Pythagorean theorem to figure it out. OK, so this is how your reference triangle is set up for this third type. And the purpose, remember, of the reference triangle is to get you back in terms of x. You're in theta after your antiderivative and you want to get back into x, this reference triangle would do it for you. And so that's the concept video for the third type of trig substitution, a, x equals a secant theta, when you have the radical of the square root of x squared minus a squared. OK, in the next video, we'll do an example of this. And then we, we, uh, we're pretty much done. I want you to see some non-standard examples after that. All right. Thank you.